This is my old light fixture, and in this video, I'll show you how to convert your old light fixture in the bathroom into two separate ones like this. Hit that like button and let's begin. Step one, turn off your circuit breaker and make sure it worked before starting. Step two, remove all the light bulbs and remove the light fixture cover. Step three, unscrew the back plate and remove all the wire nuts to remove the back plate. Step four, so to determine where my new light fixtures will be, I first needed to measure out where I'm gonna place my mirrors. This is important because I wanted to make sure that the light fixture are in the center of the mirrors, which will be in the center of the sink. I made these cardboard templates that are the same size of my mirrors so that it's easier to install them and uninstall them versus installing the actual mirrors. Then I measured out my center line for the first mirror and placed the first fixture and adjusted the height to my liking. Once I like the position, I traced over the light fixture and measure it so that I can position the next one in the same area at the same height. I traced over that light fixture as well so I know where to run my electrical wires. Step 5. Remove the old junction box by unscrewing it. It looks like mine was attached to this metal support. Step 6. I measured out the exact center point of my new light fixture got my four inch hole saw and my hole saw bowl, which is awesome by the way, to keep all the mess in the bowl when cutting holes in drywall. I'll have the links in the description below for the dust ball and everything else that I use. Next, I did the same thing on the other side. Step seven, I got my Wallabot DIY 2 out and began to find out where my studs are. Because I will need to be running wires through the studs, this is a very useful tool, especially on projects like these. It even detects metal supports and some of the wiring. Once I knew where the studs were, I drew my rectangular for where I'll be doing my cutout. I cut the drywall like this because I can drill my holes from the sides. So here I have an original low profile junction box that I'm going to reuse. As you can see here, it has a wire clamp that basically allows you to push the wire through the clamp, but when you try to pull it out, you can't. I bought a few more of these so that I can install them on the second junction box. So what you do is you take a screwdriver or a punch and punch out one of these circles like this. Because the junction box is made out of metal, I had to wiggle it back and forth a few times before I finally removed them. I ended up removing two of them on the opposite ends. Then I took a piece of scrap wood and traced the outline along the two holes. I used one inch paddle drill bit and drilled out the two holes. Next, take your clamp and from the back of the junction box, snap one into it. I installed one for each hole. I then used the same paddle drill bit and drilled out the holes that I needed in my studs so that I can run the wires through. I then used 14 gauge three conductor wire that I had left over from another project and ran it from one of the lights to the next light. The idea is to splice the wire and the light together with some wire nuts on the first light fixture and the other end will be the other light fixture. The only thing I did forget is I didn't staple the wires to my studs so they're kind of loose but I think that's going to be okay. Next, I used my utility knife and trimmed all the wires so that I have enough exposed wire sticking out for my connections. This is where having the right tools pays off, so don't be cheap like me and buy the right tools. I actually ended up buying one of these while writing this voiceover script for this project, so that way next time I'm doing another project like this, I'll have the tool ready to go. Next, I pulled the wires through the clamp in the junction box, then I opened my light fixture box and got the cover plate out and removed the screws to free the mounting plate from the cover. Here's what the plate looks like, then I installed the light fixture mounting plate to the junction box. Now you could do this after the junction box is installed, but I decided to do this before so that I have flexibility of adjusting it any way I want to or needed to. Next, I took a small piece of leftover wood, placed it into the hole, and attached it to the drywall. Then I screwed the junction box to it. On the other side, I took my wood piece with two holes in it and ran the wires through those holes. Then I used four screws and attached it to the drywall. Next, I took the junction box with the two clamps and ran both wires through the clamps. Basically, one wire is the original wire that is going back to the switch, and the other wire is the wire that is going to the second light. Then I attached the junction box to the wooden piece and added the light fixture mounting plate. This one I had to mess with a little bit to make sure it was level. Next, I took my utility knife and cut the corners around the holes to remove any loose drywall pieces. And I did the same thing for the big rectangular opening. I then attached another piece of wood and screwed it down with two screws so that I can screw the drywall with the round piece. The round piece actually came from the hole saw that I drilled for the new light positions. Then I placed my rectangular piece and secured it with three screws. 
Next, I took some drywall putty and began filling all the holes. Then, I filled some of the cracks and placed some drywall tape on them. Make sure when you're doing this to have a lot of drywall mud on it and then squeeze it out. I even ended up covering an entire hole with the two pieces of tape. Some may say it's an overkill, but this ensures that I won't have any crackings down the road. Once it was all dry, I gave it a nice sanding job to make sure the surface was nice and smooth. And then I began my knockdown process with my sponge. After a few minutes before the compound is dry, I used the fancy big plexiglass putty knife to create my knockdown texture. It's honestly not that hard to use, but can take some practice. I let that fully dry again and did a very light sanding job over the entire area just to kind of knock down any burrs or anything that's sticking out and now is ready for paint. While the paint was drying, I began to open the light fixture and followed the instructions for assembly. This one was pretty straightforward and this is what it looks like when it was fully assembled. Next, I took off the caps from my wires that are connected to the light switch and connected them to the wires that are going into the second light. I had a viewer comment on my other video stating that I should try Waggle connectors instead. I haven't tried them yet, but I definitely will need to get a pack because it looks like so much easier than using wire nuts, especially when you're connecting two wires like this and a light fixture. But I'll have the links to them in the description below. Then I connected the light with some wire nuts and installed the light tightening the screws on the top and on the bottom of the fixture. And finally, I installed the second light fixture and I was finally done. Go check out how I installed the can lights in my living room next.